Hey team, so you want to make a custom bass drum head, huh? I agree. I want to do the same thing. And you know, there's a lot of great information online on how to do this. And there's some other uh, taglines that are out there to go deeper into some of these ideas. But I wanted to do this real cost effective way. Uh, simple. Hey, if you can trace, then you can do this. Let's check it out what I've got here. Okay, so here we go. So what I wanted to do is get basically a font, a name on the bass drum head. You can do your band name, you can do whatever you want. So here it is real quick. So you're going to need Goof Off to remove the old logo. The one that I had on my bass drum head was a huge Mapex uh, you know, logo that I had to take off. So this works really well. You got to be patient with it. It's very strong stuff. Wear gloves. Um, but I use that with, um, you know, some, some, some disposable, you know, cloth and whatnot and brushes and it came off very well down to nothing. So you want to get the head down to nothing. So the other thing is, uh, after you've cleaned the bass drum head and it's completely cleaned off, then you move on to, okay, what do you want to put on there? So what I did is I wanted to just go with, you know, basically just some wording. So obviously you're going to have to print this up on a very large font. I used fonts up to about between 180 and 300 size fonts on my computer when I printed. A uh, very important thing for you to know is you have to download dafonts.com, D-A-F-O-N-T-S.com. It's a great uh, tutorial video on YouTube about how to download fonts from dafonts.com. Uh, dot com. Uh, so check it out first and then they, you'll figure out how to pull some of these really cool fonts in there. So I really like this one right here, uh, but I ended up not going with it. I ended up trumping it for the other one, uh, obviously, but you can see all the different styles. The cool thing about, once again, the fonts is that you can add these little widget type patterns or uh, even something like that. You can put on the bottom of uh, some written uh, words. So, uh, or, you know, like this, for example, is what it would end up looking like. So it's kind of a cool effect, and I ended up doing it on my end, end product. So anyway, print it up, get the size you want. After you do that, you're going to have to tape it to the underside of your bass drum head. So this is what I ended up doing. Obviously, you can just do that very, very simple. Obviously, it takes you time to line it up with a logo and make sure you get it straight. So you can see what I landed on. I landed on just... This font right here, I like it, it's very cool. Uh, and all, all I've done so far, so basically you just take your pencil and you outline the edges. Anyone can do this, right? We did this in school. Just kind of just trace it. And then I'm gonna fill the inside with either Sharpie or I'm gonna use uh, enamel paint uh, to make it really look good, a nice semi-gloss or heavy gloss enamel paint. You can see what I ended up going with right here. Uh, on the ends, this little cool pattern that it was basically one pattern that I cut in half and put the left side over here and the right side over there. But yeah, there it is, real simple bass drum, custom bass drum head to whatever you want. You can do pictures, you can do different colors. Obviously, you know, your imagination is the limit there in terms of what you can do. So, but I want to take a minute and show you guys this and hope you have a good time figuring out what you want to do and I will see you around later. I am Ringo. I play the drums. Hear the rest of me blokes. Well, I had to play around a little bit. Hey, listen, I want to tell you, this was the hardest thing ever. Uh, you know, this paint is so unforgiving. If you're not a uh, very good steady hand, uh, you're going to mess it up. And there's no turning back. So unless you have a really good hand, I would say after you've traced it with a pencil, Give it to someone, a friend, or someone who's got a real steady hand to do that and patient. It took me probably four days to do this and finish it, but I wanted to show you the finished product. It came out okay. I like it, but it was very nerve-wracking, and, and pay, I had to pace myself out because you, you can't start doing this with this paint and, and start getting tired and not focus <clears throat> and mess up a line because it's going to show that you messed up the line. So let me show you what I got here. Okay, once again, quickly. Here's the paint. Little, tiny little bottle of enamel paint. It's a beast. It is a beast. So I definitely wore gloves. Uh, obviously wore the rubber gloves, the little, you know, 
Uh, gloves for the fingers is it will not come off. Uh, this is serious paint. Uh, and I definitely recommend when you do paint, use it in a ventilated area because it's very strong paint. Um, okay, that being said, moving on to the brush. The brush, I use a very thin brush. I went online to get the information about how to do thin lines, how to paint with thin lines, and um, unanimously all the videos came to this type of brush. It's called a dagger brush, uh, but it worked pretty well. I didn't even use any of the big ones, but obviously I didn't do a big font. So, finished product is, ta-da, there it is. I like it, it came out good. I mean, for the most part, I mean, there's some shaky lines in there. You cannot see from the audience perspective. Uh, but if you, <clears throat> the M is a little bit, if you zoom in the M, you can see there's a little shaky line right in here. But honestly, when you take it back, you can't see that. But I would say, hey, unless you have a steady hand, once again, don't bother trying to do this. It's not going to come out good. It's not going to look nice. Uh, I am okay, average uh, artist, so I have somewhat of a steady hand to do this. Uh, but one thing I'll note real quick, you know, one thing I should have done, uh, now you can see at the bottom of the screen where the Remo logo kicks in, it wasn't really even to the design that I did, so it's off-centered. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to probably take the goof off and just remove that uh, because it really didn't line up, you know, very well. Sorry about the, I don't know why it's fading out there, but... It didn't come out that good <clears throat> as far as, um, I don't know, I'll look at that again. But anyway, there it is. Uh, I wanted to give you guys uh, the finished product. It's always good to finish this. It took days to do it, but it's all good. I took my time and then, of course, put the bass drum rim on it to give you a good perspective of what it's going to look like. And I'm ready to rock. So, uh, anyway, it's a nice look. I mean, I tell you. You can definitely go and order, there's all kinds of sites out there, you know, for uh, custom bass drum heads, but it's, I just, I didn't see any that were cost effective. To me, I just felt it was way too much money. And if you have the time and obviously the imagination to figure out your own font and what you want to do, or not even a font, not even words, maybe it could be a picture or something, obviously, and just paint that on the head, you just go for it. But that's why I wanted to make this video and show you that you can do this and you can make it look nice. Um, honestly, the, the paint was what, $4, the brushes were 5 for a full set, then you just got the time, and you do it, and you're done. Now I just got to finish my drums. Alright, listen, you guys take care, and I will see you around.